have to understand most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Okay, this is Mike Sula from TrueFury.com and welcome to another video. So, Matrix fans, hello. <laughs> as you know, as you can imagine, I love this movie. I love analogies and symbolism of this movie. And today I want to use a quote from the Matrix, first part of the Matrix series, to show you how our society works in a very similar way. So, imagine for a moment that the world you perceive is an illusion, that you are constantly being fed some false narratives from the moment of your birth. If you would be born into a world full of illusions and this would be the only natural thing you ever experienced, in such scenario, the truth would sound like some delusion or some kind of crazy conspiracy theory, wouldn't it? Naturally, you would protect these false narratives as you would trust them and believe in them strongly. Everyone around you would also support this illusory world. So you are born into this world and straight away you are given nationality, religion perhaps, race, set of norms, rules, dogmas, belief system, etc. All that is a fictional identity that was invented by humans, perhaps was just repeated from generation to generation without questioning. And many people define themselves from that moment with these fictional identities. Many never question validity of them, just blindly follow these throughout their lives. So let's pick religion as an example. You follow some religious ideology only because you were born into the household that support such belief system. If you would be born somewhere else, you would follow completely different religion, for example, with its own set of dogmas most likely completely contradicting the belief system you have now. And many people say, but I can change all that when I grow up, right? That's true, but how many people do it? How many people actually understand that they've been indoctrinated. Indoctrination from the very early age very often shapes our behavior throughout our lives. Give me a child until he's seven and I will show you the man. Some say this is Aristotle, others that this was Jesuits. What it means is that early development of a child often defines their whole lives. Child's brain is very easily programmable. You can put a child often into a different country and they're gonna learn language in a couple of weeks. Try doing that as an adult, right? So child forms beliefs that very often will define behavior and beliefs throughout entire life. And it's very difficult to deprogram that when you are already an adult. And I've seen this constantly so for example, I remember when I would get into debates with some people who are very religious, who were indoctrinated since childhood, and I can give them all sorts of rational arguments that are gonna contradict some of their beliefs. And they can be very rational in many other areas in life, but when it gets to religion, nothing's gonna work. This is exactly that, because it's indoctrination since childhood. And it's, it's literally a programming person. It's, it's a person becomes very much like a robot. Just very quickly to give you another example. You know, I've done a method a couple of years ago, which was a partially hypnosis, because I used to have fear of public speaking and things like that. And uh, what happened, what started appearing when we did the hypnosis, it, Actually, what I've learned from this method was that the reason why I had a fear of public speaking as an adult was because as a child, I was being ridiculed in front of others. I had, you know, these memories started appearing in my mind where I would be laughed at, you know, as a child and things like that. And this subconsciously created a fear of being judged and, you know, appearing in front of others which 
stayed with me throughout my life until I, I fixed that, obviously. But this is a perfect example how we are being shaped, especially in the first couple of years of our lives. And whatever the programs are, whether it's religion, whether it's like parents, teachers, this very often will define how the person will act as an adult. Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness. We are living in a world where all resources are available to sustain us. And yet, at the same time, we have millions of people dying out of hunger on one side of the world and millions of people dying out of overconsumption or obesity on the other side of the world. A handful of people have more resources available than bottom billions of, of people, right? And you know, an average person has to work tirelessly throughout their lives to be able to afford a small apartment very often, you know? And then, uh, you know, the, depending on the region, country and everything, but when the best years of your life are gone, working most of the time, then you can retire with some basic pension that makes it hard for you to afford, uh, you know, anything. And people think this is totally okay. This is, this is freedom. <laughs> you know, to me, this is exactly that. This is a slavery where people don't see it as slavery. They don't even understand that they're slaves. Let's pick another example. Education system, especially UK, US, where education, higher education is paid. You know, you are becoming an adult and boom, you can take a massive loan, tens of thousands of dollars, which might take you decades to repay. So you start your adult life with massive debt. So you can get some kind of a certificate, which not gonna guarantee you anything at all because these days almost everyone can get them. <laughs> but without them, your life's gonna be harder because it's gonna be even harder to get a job. So everyone is forced to do it, or most people, just to be accepted and not be on the bottom and it doesn't even guarantee you anything at all. This is, this is freedom, right? <laughs> you know, um, some time ago, I was in London and uh, I was at friend's place and his friend came over. And this guy, he's a Chinese born citizen who basically grew up in China, but at the age of 14 moved to London and was in his late thirties already having like some, some well-paid job, you know, working as a, a manager in a Chinese bank in London. So kind of westernized, let's say, guy who grew up in China. Very intelligent, you know, and, and I was like having conversation with him. And, you know, when I research some of the things about China and I hear about things like social credit system where you are being basically judged if you are a good citizen or a bad citizen and millions of people who are bad citizens can't travel or their kids can't go to a better school or they have to wait for basic uh, health care longer or you know that the internet there is censored that they get access to some kind of a version of the web that is is very much censored so they are they they keep constantly in a propaganda loop or that people who criticize government's actions or human rights abuses are treated like criminals or whatever when i listen to all that and i research that i think wow sounds like a perfect society you know perfect control of population you know, I thought this guy, obviously, you know, he's already living in, in London for most of his life. He's, can, he understands these things. I thought he gonna agree, you know, that this is just uh, slavery. And it's, uh, and <laughs> the funny thing was he was like protecting it. He was saying, no, this is really good. You know, it makes us safe. <laughs> yeah, it makes you safe. Bit by bit, your rights are being stripped away. Your you can do less and less and less. You are completely dependent on the hand that feeds you. And if you're gonna criticize it, you're gonna get punished. 
You know about the boiling frog analogy, right? Where basically you put the frog into a hot water and you heat it up more and more and more and the frog can't really feel because it's gradual, right? The temperature rises gradually. The frog can't really feel that the, the water is getting hotter and hotter and, and finally it's dead because the, the water is boiling already. So this is exactly that, you know? It's like, it might seem okay because it's gradual. Oh, we're gonna change a little bit here. We're gonna change that law. We're gonna prevent you from doing this. But a few years later, you wake up with a microchip in your head and you're constantly monitored and you know, you have no rights. So this is where it's heading. This is, this is the thing. And a lot of these people think it's for their own safety. It's for, for their, you know, so they can be free. Okay, let me read you this, this guy. I, I found his comment really funny and I think it fits into the theme of this video. So let me read you the comment under one of my videos. Hi, I was outside in the local park with my daughter the other day. War free, disease free, the sun was shining and we ate ice cream while watching the squirrels run up and down the trees. It was such a lovely moment and I feel the world is full of these moments on most days. Kudos to the human lizard overlords that provide this to us. They are doing such a great job at making life so pleasant and easy for us all. It must be really exhausting being a full-time conspiracy theorist, constantly living with the paranoia that everyone is out to get you. There are loads of great doctors out there that can help with mental illness. Go look it up. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's kind of funny, you know, because people like that think that someone like me, who is trying to raise awareness about these things, is, uh, you know, is paranoid, maybe. <laughs> it's not about being paranoid, it's about making sure, because, you know, someone who is like researching these things for years, and I remember hearing about things like microchipping population back in 2006 from different sources. And now they say that they, they're starting trials on humans, maybe very soon. You know, George Orwell was talking about what's happening now decades ago, long, long before. This was a plan long before, this is not by accident. So we, people who really investigate this stuff, who understand how these things work very well, try to warn others. So, you know, you have planet to live on, so you don't become a little slave. So, so you have future, so we can have some kind of peace. And, uh, and these people who, you know, think they are free because they have one hour a day of freedom when every other time they work like slaves and, you know, come back in the evenings exhausted, <laughs> can have their ice cream for one hour before they go to sleep and the cycle repeats. They think they are free and they think someone like me <laughs> is, a, is a paranoid and is just, uh, you know, making their freedom harder. <laughs> So imagine that you are a chicken on the farm and you are born and raised on the farm and you don't know anything else than that. And all your friends are same as you. They are born on the farm and they don't know anything else than that. You would think this is freedom. Every day the farmer comes and gives us free food. Wonderful. I can move five meters one way, five meters the other way. This is my freedom. <laughs> All I have to do is to give my eggs to the farmer, pay taxes. <laughs> I'm free, I get free food every day. So this is how this guy thinks basically. This is your freedom. Because you don't even have point of reference. You you don't have anything to compare it to because you were born thinking that, you know, working your ass off throughout your life, most of your awake time, having two weeks of holidays every year is freedom. <laughs> Where, you know, everything is available on this planet 
another thing, you know, I sometimes get attacked when I post some controversial things that question the narratives. Oh, I get attacked, I'm spreading conspiracy theories or I'm making money out of it, that's why I do it or whatever. Trust me, we don't do these types of things for money. People do it because they really understand a little bit more than these, you know, brainwashed people and they want to wake them up, you know, <laughs> they want to help them. And I could be doing anything else, you know, instead of running a website that gets censored, demonetized, shadow banned, you know, constantly in some trouble because of that, I could run a website which publishes, I don't know, some kind of viral entertainment news. 100 times easier, 100 times more money, no one is attacking you, no one is saying anything, just, just feed stupidity farther, right? Why not? Why not? Why not just be like everyone else? But many of us decide to take different paths and which are way, way, way harder, way harder. I've been demonetized, censored many times, lost like massive pages with uh, tens of thousands of followers, even hundreds of thousands before, uh, you know, had like some bans for one year on Facebook and things like that. Really, really all sorts of things that make my life very hard and the work that we do very difficult. And many of my friends who were doing similar work are already gone. And a lot of these people not only not, not a, even appreciate that, they think that, you know, they want to fight you. <laughs> they want to make your life even harder. So this is this is what I'm saying about most people are not ready to be unplugged. This is the, the idea that people are so programmed by the system to protect their slavery, basically, not uh, being aware that they are slaves, that even someone who is trying to make them aware or show them something or help them somehow, for them, they see it as something negative, you know? <laughs> So just to, just to finish, I'm very optimistic overall. Someone like me, uh, I started working online 2010 and we were one of the first sites that was posting this type of information. Like 13 years ago, there were not that many uh, websites doing this type of work. And even over the last 13 years, when I look at how many people became aware about bigger agendas, bigger things, there is a really, really massive shift. Even though there is censorship, suppression of information, more and more people become aware now than ever. So I'm very optimistic overall. This is not fear mongering. I don't want to be like uh, scaring people off or anything. I'm very optimistic, but I just want to make people think about these things because there are people who really go for a lot of challenges so you can get this type of information and then even like the people that we try to help <laughs> they try to like attack us or make our lives harder so this is this is really sad but anyway if this video resonates uh please give it a like share it on social media if you can let me know in the comments what do you think about it and support us on patreon it's patreon.com forward slash true theory and follow me on Instagram. It's Mike Saigula on Instagram. So thanks for watching. Until next time.